company I'm with called the Rebel Dot Media. I call myself the Rebel Commander. So between the two of us, there's a lot of commanding going on. Nice to meet you. Yes, pleasure to meet you. So you've been involved in the oil and gas industry a lot longer than the latest fracking boom. How long has Texas fracked? I know the technology's been around for more than 60 years. How long have you been doing it? Well, I've been doing this since 1976. And you've been fracking or, or yes. doing, yeah. Yes, actually, uh, started in South Texas by way of Louisiana through northern Texas and out to west Texas. Are you a Texan originally? Yes. How, how far back does your family go? Uh, in the energy business, I am the first generation of that. How about in Texas, I mean? In Texas, um, 60 years, something like that. So oil and gas, I mean, it's severely normal. It's not newfangled. It's no. not, and fracking is normal to you. It's not, it's not new. No, uh, fracking is uh, second nature. Now, around here, is most of the fracking oil, is there a little bit of gas, too, or is it pretty much just oil? No, it is an oil and gas basin combination. Part of what I try and do is debunk the mythology, the propaganda against fracking. And if you watch anti-fracking films like Gasland by Josh Fox, mm -hmm. it makes it look like only a fool would agree to it and that it's big corporations forcing it on you know, unsuspecting, naive populations. You don't strike me as naive. You're living amongst it. You're, I spoke to your missus. I mean, this is the family business forever. What would you say to the propagandists who say fracking is not just bad for the world, it's bad for the people in whose communities the, the fracking takes place? Well, it, you know, I, I mentioned that today. Um, an investment partner who I invest, he's an oil and gas operator, Steve Burleson over to our left, and I would like, you know, he'll add to this but uh, we got asked that question probably more than any other questions uh, that that anybody wants to know about the energy industry we don't see and don't have any documented evidence in which you see any contamination or adverse effects from fracturing even we talk about the the uh, thermal in the uh, geophysical activity the earthquakes and stuff that people talk about all over the world Steve is a geologist, he's, he's a, an expert on this kind of stuff, and he'll tell you that it, it's bunk, really. Well, I mean, listen, no industrial, no industrial exercise has zero impact. I mean, you drive your car, you leave a tiny spot of oil underneath. I mean, there's, there's no industrial activity that has zero impact. But I have to say, in terms of what a frack job looks like when it's done, I, I can't think of another energy source that has a smaller footprint, whether it's coal, nuclear, natural gas, wind, nothing, you know, per unit of energy has a smaller impact on, on the service. That's just my observation. Would you agree with that? Yes, that's true. I want to I want to go up front because it's absolutely amazing to me. I want to walk through your man cave. Do you call this a man cave or do you call this a garage? <laughs> well, I call it a barn, a barn dominium, but uh, Michelle... A barn dominium, eh? I haven't heard that one before. A living quarters up there and all that. So Is that when you're badly behaved, you're sent out here? I'm in the doghouse. Let's go take a look. Will not like. Will not like. <laughs> Whoa. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the best I've done. <laughs> empty so gun case. Got... Oh, it's empty. Yeah. Oh, I thought... Yeah. Outside. Out the front, front door. door. Your back door. Your Safe side thing. door. You were surrounded. You're a fracker yourself. Yes. You're the frack commander, and you cannot light your fossil on fire. That's a shame. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe this man cave kitchen, by the way, is nicer than most people real kitchen that's pretty fancy that is my wife's design well she's very generous to a fellow like you what's that i want to see the firearms because you know don't mess with texas it's an attitude but it's also backed up with hot lead if you're a sportsman in texas and hunt you're going to have a good uh, uh versatile gun collection whether you use them very much or not because of, it's uh kind of like uh connecting that are collecting knickknacks in your house you just like it you know it's amazing to me that this you know you have million dollar homes adjacent to industry like this but that is texas if you don't like it go to new york yes and uh there's several other areas of texas that are just like this maybe not quite as open as we are right here but all the way from south texas to east texas to north texas it's pretty much the same i just find that amazing i like your patriotism thank you 
it seems like you got things figured out here. Why does, I mean, I mentioned New York, and by the way, I love New York as well, but they have a moratorium. They have a ban on fracking, and you're living with it literally next door to your home. You got it on your shirt. I'm guessing this home was paid for by your fracking industry. What are they, I mean, listen, I like New York. It's got a lot going for it, but by God, there are people in upstate New York who could use a little bit of this oil and gas money but they're not, it's against the law to frack. Like, it's against the law. Well, um, they're missing out. That's all you can say. Um, it's good for their economy. It creates jobs. It's uh, one of the ongoing industries in the United States. When you don't have uh, a part of the country where people come in and, and have factories that they build and stuff like that, you, you know, we are, we are a factory, uh, but we're just spread all over the United States, and they're missing out on their share. Thank <laughs> you.